The first, uh, first, graph, first two graphs I showed show that there is no apparent beneficial effect of the drugs. And another peculiarity is that here you have an infectious disease that doesn't kill the very young and the very old in the way most diseases do. It kills primarily people who are in the prime years of adulthood. And I don't think that makes any sense. I think I have time to talk about the skewness effect what does testing HIV positive actually mean? Testing HIV positive says there is some sort of uh, immune system response and it's extremely non-specific. You may test HIV positive if you've just been vaccinated for flu. If you have tuberculosis, you're almost certain to test positive on these tests. The ability of the immune system to respond like that appears to be the maximum around 40 years of age. And in my book, I summarize the way in which HIV, testing HIV positive varies with age. And this summarizes a great number of groups, prisoners, blood donors, gay men, uh, what have you, decreased uh, from birth into the teens, maximum in middle age, males testing positive more frequently than females, except in the lower teenage years when females tend to test positive more often than males. But it is not always the same cross-section of the population that gets tested for HIV and in the early 80s the people who were being tested were largely gay men who either were already ill or thought for good reason that they were in danger of becoming ill and so instead of uh, instead of this more or less normal curve for testing positive, you had a shoulder on the left here at younger ages. The shift in skewness to, the, uh, to, the, uh, at, uh, to later ages, deaths at later ages in the more recent years, are uh, because uh, People of all ages, not necessarily ill, are being tested more and more frequently. So that shoulder on the lower age side disappeared. But if you test HIV positive, the mainstream view is you've got a deadly infection that requires you to be treated with antiretroviral drugs, and those drugs are incredibly toxic. Don't take my word for it. Read the treatment guidelines. Here's the latest version available on the NIH website. The risk of several non-AIDS defining conditions including heart, liver, kidney and cancer is greater than the risk for AIDS. If you are on antiretroviral treatment, you are more likely to die from the drug side effects than you are from the disease for which you're supposedly being treated. So the rates of death among HIV positive people have gone up because of these additional causes of death, drug induced. And these drugs produce death only after a decade or so. And so the curve, the age distribution of deaths from HIV disease has grown a shoulder, has been skewed to later ages because of the antiretroviral treatment. Thank you. and. Um,
I had a time or two. I also want to thank uh, Karen and Tom Dykstra for prodding me into the PowerPoint age, and, <laughs> and Mike Wilson for personal tutoring in it. Do we have any questions? So in, in your data, it, you uh, appear to make the assumption that all the people who have tested positive for AIDS are also receiving the treatment for AIDS. Um, I'm not sure that that's the case. In fact, if they do receive the treatment, they might not appropriately take the treatment. With the uh, advertised effect of the drugs that you're going to get a 10 to 15 year lifespan, and you're just looking at deaths, and we just started in you know, 15 years ago, it's quite possible that it's a bimodal distribution or a trimodal distribution. We have those people who are not receiving the treatment dying, those people who maybe are, um, uh, take the treatment but aren't in the, the subset of population that the treatment affects dying, and the people who are receiving the treatment haven't died yet. So, it, um, and I'm not sure if I agree with your explanation of the shoulder. Your trend showed uh, from 2004, 2000, that, the, that it was getting larger, and then you just explained the shoulder as being an um, effect of the drugs actually killing the people. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure there would, uh, can you respond to that please? Right. The, uh, uh, everyone in the United States gets free treatment for AIDS. We don't have socialized medicine except in the case of HIV AIDS. So in the United States, not globally, but in the United States, everyone who gets te tested for HIV uh, or who has clinical AIDS gets free treatment. Yes, uh, Henry, I just wanted to ask you, um, in your opinion, are the, are the physicians misdiagnosing people with the disease of AIDS, regardless of whatever may cause it? Because there is a great deal of controversy on the various causes of the disease, right. including whether it is the, vi the HIV virus or other, you know, maybe nutritional, immuno uh, uh, causes and that type of thing. What, what's your opinion on, on Physici that? Physicians are in a dreadful situation because they have to accept what the official point of view is. And so if there are people who they suspect of being HIV positive, they take the samples, send them to a lab and have to accept the lab results. If they're positive, they have to follow the official treatment guidelines. Uh, the issue of what actually caused AIDS is really complicated by the fact that the definition has changed progressively from 1987 on. And uh, the diseases that are now classed as AIDS are very different from the ones that were the original 1980s AIDS. And the biggest change came in 1993, the Centers for Disease Control said, anyone who's HIV positive and has a certain uh, immune system cell count, less than 200 uh, cells per milliliter, has AIDS. No other country in the world accepts that definition. So if you have AIDS in the United States for that reason, you can go to Canada or Mexico and you don't have AIDS anymore. And 70% <laughs> of the US AIDS diagnoses are on that basis. Uh, Henry, uh, several years ago, we had a, a, a really interesting speaker on this subject. I uh, uh, can't remember the man's name. Ruth Bernstein. Yeah, and, uh, oh, Ruth? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, what was identified there was about a dozen cofactors that were, some were strong and some were weak. Have you included uh, the cofactor uh, uh, from that list in there in any way, or, or is that just too much work? Uh, I don't believe that that was actually the, that the cofactors are actually uh, the cause of AIDS. And, since writing the book, I've had a communication from a gay man who's been positive and healthy for 15 years because he identified the cause of the original AIDS 
as intestinal dysbiosis. 